principal at Lightning is myself, Kirill Filov, uh, faithful student of the Department of Aeromechanics and Flight Engineering, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology. So, the subject of my paper is Autonomous Ultra-Water UV Flight Control System, which is based on GPS and INS data fusion. Actually, we will consider different fusion, uh, not only for GPS and INS, so the other thing will be the same. So, the presentation is divided into several parts. First of all, I will uh, give an introduction concerning Ultra-Water UV, what it actually is, and its general applications. And, can I have a pointer? Uh, so later I will move on speaking about the flight control system and the main requirements. We should guide it to design it. Uh, later I will move on speaking about the sensors and the set of sensors we actually need to have to uh, get sustainable solution about position and orientation. And after that we will uh, move on speaking about the key part of the presentation, this is LTC estimation and the methods to increase its accuracy and also position estimation. So, and in conclusion, we will see the results obtained uh, of the plan presented methods. So, what is Multivator view? This is a flying platform, which is usually looks like this. It can have either four or six or eight rotors. And recently, uh, this area is being rapidly developed field and attracts more and more attention of both uh, customers and scientists. Uh, and they are known to be good flying platforms for especially aerial photography and videography and also for other terrain explanations with the usage of uh, additional uh, devices. This is mostly due to advances such as low speed flight, towering regime and vertical takeoff and landing. Uh, it's obviously that the uh, system is unstable by itself, so the flight control system is required, which is uh, which provides both civilization and navigation functions. So, uh, unfortunately, the accuracy of uh, implemented measurement units, which are in general MEMS, microelectromechanical systems, is not sufficiently to guide and navigate such MEVs. Uh, so, uh, they are required to design special methods to uh, increase it. Mostly they are mathematical methods. So, uh, first of all, let's begin with the flight control system uh, general concepts. The flight control system provides the ability of maintaining desired orientation and, as a process, the position. Uh, generally, a uh, flight control system can be subdivided into three big groups. So, the first one is information acquisition. Uh, from the sensors, uh, we need to know the information about acceleration, angular rates, orientation in space, GPS position, atmosphere, pressure, magnetic field, and etc. So when we know all this information, we uh, export it to verification, filtering, uh, mutual fusion, and conversation in order to get uh, the most as we can. Uh, and having the exact information about all this that was mentioned before, uh, we can apply control algorithms and perform control actions. So the first and the second parts are the most of the interest in the presented paper uh, because it assumes the development of the software for microcontroller and sensors into communication libraries and also usually we call this part as low-level software. And uh, as for the second part, it consists of uh, generally uh, mathematical algorithms for increasing precision. So the flight control system design was uh, identified at the preliminary stage. So in the part of the whole system is microcontroller, uh, and I decided to use STM32 based on ARM Cortex M3 uh, core, and it has a frequency of 72 megahertz. So also we have on board uh, inertial measurement unit, which includes accelerometers and gyroscopes, magnetometer, pressure sensor and uh, other external ports for peripheral devices correct connection such as uh, for example GPS or Wi-Fi model for radio link. So as for the software architecture it consists of four parts. On the lowest one this is SPM Synopsis library and the highest one is flight control logic. So in between we have peripheral library which allows us uh, to support all the ports such as VR, ABC, PWM, USB and drivers for 
different communication between the uh, sensors and the microcontroller itself. So to meet the requirements of small board, we use routing uh, on the four layers. You can see this is the routing here. Uh, and this is how it looks like in the final board with uh, fully assembled components. The size is 60 by 40 millimeters, it's very compact. And the weight is only 14 grams. Uh, so now let's speak a little about the uh, main component of the microcontroller. This is inertial measurement unit, or so-called IMU. Uh, it consists of three-axis accelerometer, three-axis gyroscope, and digital motion processor integrated in one silicon uh, package. The size of the uh, package is 4 by 4 by 0 0.9 millimeters, and in this project I use MPU 6050. Uh, I see uh, from investors company. The key feature of this device is that it has digital motion processor, which is using the calculation of uh, orientation in uh, integrated processor. So uh, this is really helps because uh, we reduce the load for the main CPU. So the calculation is down at the rate of 200 hertz, and uh, microcontroller will see the orientation in quaternion rotation which can be easily converted to error angles. And knowing the orientation of the IC, we know the orientation of the board, and so the orientation of the quadcopter. Uh, also, it was designed as a special application on processing for IMB tests. So you can see the board. Uh, behind you can see the screen with the application running and the orientation of this parallel height corresponding to the rotation of the board. Uh, now let's speak a little about the altitude measurement. So uh, here you can see the list of the sensors which can be applied for altitude measurement. So the first one is barometric pressure sensor. Its advantage is that it, uh, its application boundary is it's not limited, but the disadvantage is that the data is very noisy. Uh, the second one is ultrasonic rangefinder. It has very good resolution of about plus minus one centimeter, uh, but the uh, maximum uh, distance is only 8 or 8 meters, depending on the uh, Thanks to Robert, we did outstanding performance, uh, then performance, but we at first of the results first of the time. And as for GPS, uh, it doesn't give uh, enough accuracy for our measurements, and uh, another main disadvantage is we can't see the same goal. So, as for my sentence, we uh, take the barometer and accelerometer. Uh, so let's first of all start with the barometer. So we know that the pressure is 
all this data uh, that's processed uh, into the engine, uh, summarizing mm -hmm. the information. <coughs> the parameter has two dimensions, also big latency, but the accuracy uh, of measurement remains to be constant in time. The full range of accelerometer is in contact, uh, has excellent dynamic performance, instant response to the model, but measurement accuracy works in time. Uh, so then we uh, make it even using this situation. And this is what we have concerning the data. Uh, the red line responds to parameter only measurements with thermal signal type, and the blue line is this data, uh, and actually the final test is the data. Uh, so we were able to achieve the accuracy of plus minus 15 centimeters. Uh, now let's move forward to the value in the video of GPS solution uh, for the test. Error that you make. Yeah. yeah, that's right. But the uh, attitude error 
is not very big because uh, we use DMP, digital motion processor, which accuracy is uh, about less than uh, one degree. So the attitude uh, is uh, this thing is very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Continue on the third presentation now.